This is Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan Proft and Amy Jacobson on AM560, The Answer. Welcome back to AM560, The Answer. Amy Jacobson here, Bruce Wolf. Hi. Hi, Bruce. Thanks for coming in today. <laughs> Are you going to do Chet Chet Chat for us? Uh, Chet Chet Chat used to be a Friday phenomenon on oh, the radio. Oh, so you're going to, oh, mm-hmm. what a tease. It's for tomorrow's yes, show. Yes, 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 yes. Great. And then maybe you'll forget about it. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Uh, before we get to the legalization, the possibility of legalizing recreational marijuana in Cook County, let's quickly go to Sean in Elmwood Park. Hello, Sean. Hi, Sean. Will you two stop breaking my show for God's sake? First <laughs> off, Amy, when some crackpot calls you about birds, not only do birds take Durbins all over our cars, the food you use feeds the rats. So stop feeding the birds, okay, dummy? Because in the game of life, I pick the cat. And as for you, yes. number one, there is no such thing as a trade deficit. And you took Econ 101 at your fancy schools. Why don't you explain? Northwestern University. Where did you go again? Uh, Montefiore or something? Where? I, look. Chicago Mercantile Exa- Sean, did I ever say... Did I ever claim that there was a trade deficit? We have a trade deficit with Target. I buy stuff from Target, and they give me, you know, they give me goods, and I give them money. I don't cons- yeah. Re- reading my tweets. Good for you. <laughs> okay. And, and here's the other thing: you're going to have your guest on about pot stores. I'm all for it. But are the stores going to be owned by lobbyists? Like the gaming houses all over the state? Are we going to pretend it's going to be good for the economy? Or are you going to open it up to the free market? I'm so sick of these frauds. Well, why don't, the economy. Okay. John, you know, well, why don't you take a deep breath, <gasps> inhale, and, and exhale, would, maybe I'd attend like to... a yoga class, do a few chaturangas, and uh, we'll listen to our next guest, John Fritchie, Cook County yeah. Board Commissioner, sure. former state rep, who's Thank going you, to talk Sean. about the... Po- yeah, thanks, Sean. Wow. Think he's a little fired up today? I was going to say that they should, you know, make it illegal to uh, smoke cigars <laughs> in the city of Chicago, but maybe Elmhurst is okay. Yeah, that's it. Let's yeah. join to uh, AM560. A returning guest, although it's been a few years, uh, Cook County Commissioner John Fritchie. Hello, how are you? I'm fine. It has been a while. <laughs> hey, Amy. Hey, Bruce. Hi. So you want to, uh, it's, it's an advisory referendum, so the voters get to decide whether or not they want to put uh, or have a possibility of legalizing recreational marijuana. Right. So what I'm looking to do is just, you know, let the voters weigh in on this. You know, Cook County voters make up about 40 percent of the Illinois population. Uh, there's a legislation pending in the General Assembly for this. And I want them to know at least where half the population stands on this issue. Uh, you know, the, it makes a lot of sense. You know, a lot of people talk about the revenue and, you know, the estimates for Illinois are about $500 million dollars. Uh, but there's also a huge cost savings for us. You know, every year we wind up with tens of thousands of people arrested for low-level possession of marijuana. Mm-hmm. Uh, then, you know, all those cases clog up the court system. They take up time of the state's attorney and the public defense, uh, defender, both of whom are already strapped for cash, as you can see in this year's county budget. Uh, and most of those cases get dismissed, about 90 percent of them. So we're clogging up the court system for no reason, leaving thousands of people with an arrest record for no reason, which makes it tougher for them to get a job, to apply for a loan. Uh, to get housing, whatever it may be. And, you know, you've seen in the other states, you've got about 29 states now who either have recreational or medicinal marijuana. You know, the revenue's coming in. The sky isn't falling. And I think it's time that Illinois takes a hard look at doing this uh, sooner rather than later. Because we are going to have to make up for the soda tax or the sugary beverage tax, which goes away when, in December? December 1st will uh, be the end of that half, uh, happily. And we're going to pass the budget without that $200 million. You know, it's not that often that we win one, uh, but I was happy to be at the forefront of the repeal efforts. And uh, we got a good victory for the taxpayers on that one. Yeah, but, uh, you know, where were you going to get the, the money to, for all these programs? Uh, I, I, I I have no uh, horse in this race. I don't live in Cook County. And as a matter of fact, I was selling uh, soda pop oh, you were to on Cook your, County residents. On your front lawn. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I saw gouging, your little kiosk I was gouging there. them. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, if I may play, it's hard for me to argue because I'm kind of in favor of legalizing marijuana. Um, well, do you smoke pot? <laughs> That's between me and my dealer, okay? But, John... No, but some of the smartest people I know smoke marijuana. But and then it, the dumb ones there drink. Are, I, I would 
suggest that you read Infinite Jest, the uh, third chapter, where a guy is basically on a pot bender the entire time. And there are deleterious effects to overuse uh, of marijuana, but so there is also with alcohol. Uh, but aren't you worried at all that, I mean, marijuana is a gateway drug? And, you know, there, there was something to be said for prohibition. We, you know, got a lot of uh, alcoholics uh, uh, dry. That, that, that's what happened. And so you never know what kind of can of worms you're opening. Well, actually, there'd be a lot of things to say that you know, prohibition didn't even accomplish that. What it did was force people to go underground. And that's, you know, what you're seeing now. People who want to smoke marijuana are finding ways to get it. We'd be much better off legalizing it, regulate, regulating it, taxing it, and having it under a controlled system. As far as it being a gateway, uh, not only is that not what the studies show, uh, what's timely right now is that they're finding that marijuana is actually a very effective way to deal with the opioid crisis. And it's been a good way to wean people off of opioids. All right. So you think it would generate anywhere between 350 and $700 million a year? You're looking at 350 to $700 million a year statewide. And then there's obviously going to be, like with anything else, there's going to be local taxation. Uh, so there is going to be money generated at the local level as well. But when you're talking about that type of money going in statewide, that's money toward education funding. That's money toward the pensions. And no, we don't want to, you know, fund the schools with cigarettes, alcohol, and uh, pot. But you'll uh, take but the money. Well, yeah. we fund, <laughs> we're supposed well, to be funding but, schools but with the lottery. Right. Well, that, yeah. Right. And we all remember how that how that yeah how that works. But, sure. Yeah, but, but, yeah, you know, but 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 this is you know it, it's real money coming in. And Bruce, you know, when you made the mention about alcohol, you know, I think it's a very strong argument to say that we have more societal problems that are coming out of people that are drinking too much than people that are smoking too much. I agree. I mean, it's it's hard for me to argue with you in this because I'm on your side. Right, but <laughs> I just, no, that, that's you know what? I'm, I'm going to hang up and call it a day. <laughs> exactly. I'm stop while I'm ahead. You've convinced Bruce. Well, but here's yeah. the thing: How does it work to be you know to have a where you grow, have a pot farm, and then you have the distributors and all that. How many? You know, I heard that you have to pay what? Bring a million in cash to some board and say that you want to be a pot grower. Well, you, you have to show that you have the funding. So when you look at our medicinal cannabis program, so and I was actually one of, when I was in the legislature, I was one of the original sponsors. That's about a decade ago. The state regulates that literally from seed to sale. Uh, they are carefully monitoring the cultivation sites that grow it. Every aspect, the transportation, you know, the retail sale at the dispensaries, it's all monitored, it's all overseen. And so we already have a framework in place at the state level. Mm -hmm. So expanding that to recreational use would take some work, but uh, not as much work as it did to get us up for the medical cannabis. Now, let me ask you, don't you think overall, though, in the aggregate, because each one of these discrete and insular things that you talk about, you know, it sounds good. You know, you make money off the vices of people. But overall, I mean, look what we're doing. We're basically encouraging vice, and that's how we make money, whether it's through gambling, casinos, marijuana, you know, a pool hall in River City, whatever it is. These things, are. it seems that we're at root corrupt. I mean, doesn't that ever really bother you? Okay, candidly, on, on this issue, it really does. You're not encouraging anybody. You're sure as hell not mandating anybody to do this. What you're recognizing is that there is an illegal market right now. There are a number of people that smoke cannabis, and that we'd be better off having a framework to regulate it. You know, the prohibition argument is a very good one that you brought up before. You know, people were drinking alcohol one way or the other. All prohibition did was increase no, violence actually, over here, here's by the making thing. illegal sales. No, yeah, you're no, actually wrong about prohibition. I mean, you're right to a certain extent, but it, you're not totally right. Let's prohibition not did relitigate stop, the prohibition. <laughs> but the thing is, is that there were benefits to prohibition. Right. You had fewer alcoholics out there. You actually did. So, I mean, I, I can see going, you know, one way or the other. But let's, you know, recognize the opposing argument. There were fewer addicts out there at the time, and you will increase addiction when you legalize marijuana. You you will, even though people say you really don't get addicted to marijuana, but you do. Well, right, well, but I, I don't know about that one because, I mean, the over, and Bruce, with all due respect, you know, the overwhelming number of studies say that it is not an addictive drug. It is not a gateway drug. And so, again, you know, you can find a study that's going to say, and, you know, we all, we all know that. Uh, but the majority of studies will say that, no, this is not the issue that you're seeing happen here. There right. are podcasts. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. well, yeah. if approved by the full board, then Cook County voters would be asked, how soon would that happen? 
Well, okay, so here, you know, and, and that's where there's been some confusion. You know, this obviously, the legalization question has to happen at the state level. You know, what we're trying to do is let Cook County voters weigh in. Mm-hmm. So my measure will be voted on at the December Cook County Board meeting. Yeah. Uh, if approved, and I'll tell you at this point, I already have 12 sponsors, so I have enough votes to approve it. It will go on the March ballot, and that, that will simply, you know, give the General Assembly a very good idea of where Cook County voters stand on this. They'll be in, you know, they'll be in session next March, and it would be my hope to get something passed sooner rather than later in Springfield. It'll be tough mm-hmm. to pass in an election year, yeah. but if it happens the year afterwards, at least we'll, you know, we'll get moving on this. You know, and it's worth pointing out that there was a uh, Paul Simon Institute poll that just came out recently that said two thirds of voter of uh, residents statewide approve legalization. About seventy percent in Cook County and about seventy four percent in the city of Chicago. So the public support is there, and now I'm hoping that the political support will be there as well. All right. Well, thank you, John Fritchie, Cook County Commissioner. Appreciate your time. Hey, it's a pleasure to talk to you both. All right. Take care. And he joined us on our Turnkey Dot Pro Answer Line. Good evening, everyone. Our top story: Marijuana is now legal. Le- le- is now legal, and it's made everything just so great. Uh, we now go to Trisha Takanawa for a report on how awesome a flower looks. Tom, I'm lying here thinking how a flower doesn't know it's a flower. It just is one, you know. I, I forgot where I was going with this, Tom. It's what-